Welcome to another special holiday edition of the Touchdown Club Coaches Show. Coach Masella, Max Rotnecker. Coach, a lot of, you added 14 players, so a lot to talk about here. Um, what's your overall take on the on this signing class that you added last week? Well, I, I think, Max, what we did was uh, we addressed some immediate needs that we need help immediately some, from some older players uh, that can come in and contribute right away. So, we took seven uh, mid-year guys that will be here in January. We're going to add a few more uh, in the month of January. So uh, that was that was great. And then we took care of our backyard. You know, uh, we signed some kids locally that we feel can develop into very good football players down the road. So, um, you know, we're, we're not mission accomplished yet, but uh, we're, 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 we're hitting what we, we've set our priorities to be. And, uh, uh, we still have a few guys to add that can come in and start school in January, and, and our coaches are doing a great job working on that. Now, before we get into this, obviously last year with the pandemic, you weren't able to, to have in-person contact as much. Now, we're still in the pandemic, but official visits were allowed, and we got to meet these players uh, and these prospective student-athletes on campus, and you were able to show them uh, Wagner and what Wagner's all about in New York City. So, so how much fun was that to finally be able to, to recruit in person again? And how much of a difference makes it for a place like Wagner to showcase the campus in person? Well, I, I, I think from, more importantly, I wanted to meet these guys uh, and, and get to know them a little bit because I think uh, the one thing that, that I've learned, uh, Wagner became a, a, uh, uh, a stop for a lot of guys. It was the last chance and uh, it, it definitely showed uh, we had some kids in the program who really didn't want to be here. And I wanted to make sure anybody that we were going to offer a scholarship or recruit in, into our program, that Wagner was where they wanted to be. So that, that was first and foremost. And then, you know, we have uh, great things to offer when somebody comes on campus. Uh, you know, the, our location is, is key. Our campus is beautiful. And uh, we have a great tradition. So we wanted to make sure uh, that the players that that uh, we took and uh, wanted to be a part of Wagner um, would be there. And uh, it worked well. It was great. All right. So let's go one by one. Some of these names are going to be tough. So you're going to have to help me out on that. Um, but let's talk uh, Justin Federico, the first guy to sign uh, from Iona Prep. Yeah, uh, uh, an offensive lineman who, who was injured a little bit this year, but fought through it. He, he broke his leg and played. And um, uh, we think Justin's going to be a really good addition to us. Uh, he's, he's big, he's strong, he can move, and he's very, very competitive from a great program in Iona, which, who won the state. So uh, we're really pleased to have Justin. Now, second, the linebacker, also locally for, uh, from New Jersey, Omar Abdelaziz. Yeah, Omar's been, uh, it's, it's great to be able to sign Omar because he wanted to be here. He's been on campus four or five times. He's been to a whole bunch of games. Uh, he's athletic, a uh, little undersized as far as height's concerned, but he's strong. And uh, we think he's a great addition and somebody who will, uh, you know, contribute on special teams uh, in the very near future and then develop into a solid linebacker for us. Now, speaking of size, one of the biggest recruits we've ever had at Wagner, at least in the, in the time that I can remember being here, Arnold, um, the, Johnny, the outside linebacker. Yeah, Arnold, uh, I, I think uh, he's out from Merced by way of Ghana. Uh, he's only been in the States, you know, three or four years. Um, he's explosive. Um, I, I think he can be a, a really special player. He's athletic. He was a basketball player who switched to football. He's only been playing football about three years. So, um, you know, we're excited to have him. Um, I, I looked at his film right off the bat and said uh, he, he, he has a chance to be a really special player. Now, next up, you, you got Randy Pfizer last year, and now you got his teammate, Jeff, and, and word on the street has it, they're both crazy fast. We know Pfizer's speed, but, but how about Jeff? Yeah, Jeff, uh, Jeff can run. Uh, he's from Red Lion High School. I don't know if he's quite as fast as Randy. That's a debate that the two of them go back and forth. <laughs> Did that uh, come up? Jeff, Jeff fits in that line of, uh, you know, speedy receivers. 
uh, that that we're we're fortunate to to get. Uh, so um, uh, we're we're extremely excited to have them here. You, you didn't make them race during the official visit? <laughs> no, we didn't. We, we wanted to, but you know, rules wouldn't allow that. <laughs> of course. All right. Next up, uh, Lance DeSorbo, the defensive lineman. Yeah, I love Lance. Uh, I love everything about Lance. Um, uh, you know, he, he's the only football player I've ever recruited that has a one man sled in his backyard. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's, he's a big person. He's, he's six, four, he's two seventy. Uh, but you, you gotta like him. He's, uh, he, he's got a, a will to be really, really successful. Uh, he's competitive and, uh, we're really happy to have him, um, uh, by way of, I, I believe it was Palomar, uh, JC that he's from. So I went and home visited him, uh, in December and, um, love everything about him. Now, obviously when you talk about a recruiting class, the quarterback position is something that you get the most questions about, uh, naturally. So, so Ryan Kraft, um, what made you offer him and, and, and what do you like about him? Yeah. Ryan was from the same school as Arnold, uh, Janney and, um, you know, coach brought him down and uh, I got a ch chance to talk to Ryan. I watched a little bit of film, but I just liked something about him. I think he's, he's got a, he, he's got a, a confidence about him, um, but he's not arrogant. Um, he looks, he, he's very, very competitive. He was a three sport high school and three star uh, high school uh, athlete. And um I don't know. You know, I, 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 there's something about him that I really like. He's athletic. He's, he's a good size. He can throw it. Um, but I, I think it's all the intangibles that, that, that I, I, I really liked in, uh, and coach new guy and our offense staff felt the same way when we got him on campus. So, uh, so Ryan will come in and compete. We're going to take another quarterback. We're working on one more coming in. Um, so, uh, you know, Ryan's a great addition to the program. Now, next up, back to the defensive side of the ball, Devin Jones, the defensive end. Yeah, Devin Jones is from AHOP down in North Carolina, uh, played high school ball in Nor uh, Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, he's got great size. He's explosive off the ball. And, and, and another, uh, he may take a, a year, year or so to develop, uh, but who knows? He, he's got a year of prep school on them. He's got a chance to be a really good uh, defensive lineman for us in, 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 the, in the future. Now, sticking with the defensive front seven, Sam Okeo. Yes, yeah, Sam's from Newburgh Free Academy uh, up in, up in uh, Dutchess County, New York. Um, Sam is athletic. Uh, he brings a lot to the table from a great program. And um, I think, again, he's going to take a little time to develop, but uh, we really like Sam and, and fortunate enough to have him. Now, you love players from Staten Island, um, and and you've you've recruited a fair share um, of players from Staten Island in your in your short time here. So uh, next up, we have uh, Olan Rivayu Adeyemi. Lammy. Just go by Lammy. That's that's Lammy? Go okay. With. That's good. Yeah, we'll, we'll forward that to the PA announcer immediately. Uh, Lammy is from Curtis High School. Uh, he played for a coach who I coached and recruited and played for me, Pete, Pete Gambadella. Uh, Lammy is just scratching the surface. Another guy who played basketball, it, it, kind of funny. I went and watched him play during the season and, you know, he moved around pretty good, showed his athleticism. Uh, I didn't realize how big he was until he got on campus, uh, you know, for his official visit. And um, I, I was really surprised how big he is and a chance uh, to develop into one of those special edge rushes down the road. Now, now you look at um, what you said earlier um, as we talked throughout the season and what you look for in recruits and you, and, and you stressed height and, and size and speed. Um, and when you look at Jorel Liverpool, who's, who's, I think, is he still six, 17, 16 years old? It, one of the biggest wingspans you'll ever see. Another uh, former ba basketball player who went to football at, Jarrell, I think, is 6'7", six, 6'6", seven. Um, six, 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 seven. He has a good size frame. He was explosive. He's one of these guys that's going to probably take a little time to develop. Um, but um, I, I think he can be a really good edge pass rusher down the road. 
Uh, he's got great length and size and explosiveness in uh, Midwood High School. And, and Midwood, we lost a D lineman a year ago that we were trying to get, but uh, we got uh, Jarrell this year. And uh, we're fortunate. It's going to take a little time to develop. He's another guy coming over from basketball, but we have a chance. Uh, I think he has a chance to be a special player. Now back to the offense, uh, Jala Zizi. Yeah, he's from uh, Minnesota State. JC played, uh, started at Georgia Southern. Uh, he's a big receiver, uh, explosive. Um, you know, I, I think uh, we were recruiting a the quarterback there also. Uh, for a while, we're still recruiting him. But uh, uh, he jumped off the film as somebody saying, hey, we got to take a look at him also. And and uh, it worked out that, that ZZ's coming to us. And uh, he should be an outside receiver who can stretch the field and, and, and make some big plays for us. And back to Staten Island, Luis Specio. Yeah, Lou, Lou is uh, one of those guys that um, I think I think he was one of the better receivers, if not the best receiver in New York City this year. Uh, he plays basketball also. He's about 6'1 or 6'2, but he's one of these guys when you watch him play, uh, he dominated a lot of games in, in, a, in an understated way. And, and um you know, I think I think we we, we uh, stole one this year. I, I usually I didn't think he would be in our our wheelhouse. I thought he would play at a higher level, whether it's the CAA or or, or some other programs. But um, you know, the, the, these times are a lot different uh, for high school players, and he's one who kind of we kind of recruited, recruited, hoping that uh, he might be there, and 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 at the end he was. So it. It worked out well. I think he has a chance to be a really good receiver. Now, finishing off the class with two JUCO defensive backs, first up, Jaden Brown. Yeah, Jaden Brown's not a JUCO. He's from Milford Academy. Um, we've been tracking him for a while. He was, uh, you know, recruited fairly heavily out of high school. Uh, and I think he turned down somebody and ended up at Milford Academy. We saw him play when they came on campus in their game. Uh, we liked what we saw. He, he's competitive. Uh, he can play a few different positions. I think he's a corner. Um, but uh, again, the, I think the great thing with it, he's going to be here in January uh, to get going. So uh, we've had a great track record with Milford Academy guys. And hopefully he's in that line that, that turns out to be a really good player for us. I was just going to mention that the amount of players that we've seen and, and the amount of all NEC and, and all American players that we've seen from Milford Academy is, is a long track record. But then last but not, definitely not least, Roberto Auguste from, from Nassau Community. Yeah, another one we saw play against us in, in the JV. You know, the JV games are important for two reasons. One, to get our guys reps and, and get them playing game, you know, playing games. But the other is to evaluate players and, and, Roberto, we got a chance to, to evaluate. Uh, he's long, he's six foot uh, corner, uh, but he also might be able to play safety for us. So we feel we, we got a player that can be versatile in, in playing either safety or corner. And um, we needed some D-backs to come in and, and uh, uh, we're certainly excited to have Roberto here. Now, obviously there's now, um since I don't know three or four years ago, there's this early signing period, and and no, it's no longer one signing day, um, but two periods. And and certain schools in the FCS, obviously in, in FBS football, is a little different. Um, but in the FCS, some schools decide to jump on um, a bigger class early, and some schools decide to wait a little bit. So, uh, how many players are you, are you expecting to sign during the next period, early 2022? Well, I, you know, with the the kids coming in mid year, I don't know if they'll sign; they'll just be here. Uh, we'll announce them with that second class, but um, we still got a ways to go in recruiting. So, um, you know, we, we had a lot of kids into the transfer portal, a lot of guys graduate. So uh, we still got some work in front of us, uh, but that's a good thing. And uh, I think Wagner football had to turn over. And certainly we finally turned it over where we feel we got the players that, that want to be here, want to compete and get better each and every day and be great student athletes. So uh, we still have a little work to go. Um, I, I think recruiting has changed. I, I really do think it, it, it's changed with the transfer portal. 
uh, I don't think you have to be in a big rush just to take somebody. Um, and, and I think patience uh, will win out in the day because uh, there's a lot of high school kids out there that are really frustrated that they're not being offered scholarships. And I get it, but the transfer portal has made this uh, college football a lot different in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the scope of recruiting where you're gonna start to fill needs. And we have some definite needs that we're looking at that we're probably gonna fill with transfer portal guys as opposed to high school guys right now. But the good thing is we did sign, you know, six high school kids uh, that can come in really seven when, or really eight when you think of Jones, Devin Jones and Jaden Brown, eight freshmen coming in, but two of them will be here already. So uh, I think we have some work to do. It's probably going to be more um, transfer portal type kids, uh, but we're still looking to fill some, some needs uh, with some freshmen. So, um, you know, our coaches did a good job in the early uh, period uh, uh, identifying guys and, and us now getting a chance to meet them. And my big whole, whole thing with our, our coaches is I want guys who want to be here. I don't want guys who are, who have one foot out the door or, or, or have to be here. I want guys who want to be here. And um, it, it, I think we got the right guys coming in and, and time will tell, but we got a little more work to do and we're excited to do that work. All right, coach. Can't wait to be back on campus soon after the holiday break. Enjoy the holidays coach. Thank you as always for the great insight. And uh, we'll see you again in January for the next signing day. Hey, Hey Max, you have a great holiday. I, I wish you uh, Everybody a happy, uh, happy uh, holiday season, uh, healthy new year, and we can't wait to get going in 22.